It's all about Jesus. It's all about Him. Lift your hands to Him. Just in a moment, it's all about Jesus. He's the reason why we are here. He's the reason why we are gathered. Lift your hands, open your mouth and magnify the name of the Lord. Open your mouth and bless the Lord. In 60 seconds, lift your voice and adore Him. Magnify and praise His holy name. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It is you that I see. Just in the mood of worship. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is, there is power in your name. Oh, oh, oh. miracles happen in your name. When we lift our voice to say. Close your eyes and behold him standing before you. When we lift our voice to praise, it's only it's you that I see. It's you that I see. Open your mouth and just pray in the spirit for 60 seconds. He's the one that we see. It's all about him. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about You. It is all about You. <laughs> My Father. It's all about You. Jesus, it's all about you, it is not about me, 
It's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you and not about me. Yeah. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. Come on, open your mouth. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in other tongues. Bless him in your own words. Everyone in this room, participate in the worship. Whether you are following online or you are right here in this auditorium, outside or inside, participate in the worship. It's all about the King of Kings. We reverence Him. We adore Him. We bless Him. Say ba ma na ma na ma na 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 ba da de. Sha da ba ra ga de kari da ba. Oh 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 oh. Hey. da de 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 de. Just worship him. There's no restraint. Adore him. The Aribiti Rabata, the one who is called Kabiesi, Eledu Mari, Upangiji, call his names, bless him. Ashabara Kate Barudias, Alewine She, Sorobokosia. We love you now For your mercy never fails us all our days have been laid in your hands from the moment that we wake up until we lay our head we will see of a good night I will see I will see of the goodness of God. Come on, you will sing of the goodness and the mercy of the Lord. Of the goodness of God. Open up your mouth and declare I to him to Of the goodness of God. I will sing.
mercies of the Lord. All His goodness oh, 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 God. I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time, I will sing. Voices of the people say for you are Lord, righteous and worthy. Oh God, but from our hearts. Just giving you two minutes. You don't have to sing. Just soak in this presence, in this atmosphere. You can lift your hands if you can. Don't say anything. Just soak. Allow 
allow the atmosphere of his presence to just saturate your soul something quickly before we sit down just lift your hands everywhere the Lord told me that today before I begin to teach there are people that he will move to another level in the spirit it's like a graduation for you you have stayed on one level for long and it's time for you to step into another level there are different levels of operations in the spirit the higher the level that you are in the stronger the energy that is released the greater the manifestations of the Holy Spirit and the greater the possibilities that exist just close your eyes and lift your hands everywhere father I ask right now those people at least about seven of them that you have designed this service to be for them a season to another level in the spirit I ask that right now you will hold them by your right hand and take them to a higher level higher level of the anointing higher level in your presence a stronger dimension of your grace be released upon them right now from the left to the right from the front to the back right now touch in the name of Jesus that's it just help them you are going higher that's what the Lord is saying you are going higher to another level this can be it God is so much bigger than this wherever they are take that grace and step into a higher level of the spirit you will never be the same again the operations of the spirit around your life has changed henceforth there will be a higher level of the supply of grace higher manifestation of the power and the glory of God take that grace now yes Yes, touch them, Holy Spirit. Touch them. How great you are. How great you are. How great you are. Oh. there's a young lady I see the angel of the Lord putting something that looks like coals of fire on your hands you begin to feel intense heat on your hands that's a gift of the spirit 
That's a gift of the spirit that is being activated right now. Touch. Touch. You can never be the same after tonight. How great you are Oh, 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 oh. Just allow God He's doing a lot of activations Activations are going on Prophetic dimensions are being released Atmospheres are shifting When you go back you find that the atmosphere over your secret place has shifted. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. How great you are. The Lord is stirring the waters tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, da, 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 da. Mighty God. Mighty God. You are the God of wonders. You are the God above all gods. And we bless you. What an atmosphere of your presence in this place. There are three people that the Lord is showing me right now you've had a desire to access the spirit of revelation you want to see in the spirit you want to open the word of God and find access to the mysteries of God there are at least three of you and the Lord has heard your prayer right now that spirit of revelation is released upon you and you're stepping into another dimension when you open the scriptures light flood light will come on your soul access will be granted you into higher vistas of the heavens right now in the name of jesus take that grace take that grace take that grace the spirit of revelation take that grace it is activated. Take that grace. Take that grace. You have been called to a higher place. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I ask that your word will come forth with power. I ask that your presence will become stronger and stronger as I release your word. Let the eyes of your children be open. Let their ears pop open in the spirit. Let men be transported to higher places in glory. And let fire from above rest upon them. Let your name be glorified. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Wave your hands to him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Please be seated in his presence. God bless you. Gently, please. Gently, just be seated. every one of us to pneumatic and to the house of God I want to appreciate those of us that are on site 
Thank you for defying the rain to be here. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. It is important to not forsake the gathering of the saints. It is important to not forsake the gathering of God's people. A great general in the faith, Dr. Billy Graham, once said this, that if Jesus loved the church enough to die for her, then we as believers who are members of that body, of that church, who must respect the church well enough to support and to attend it. If Jesus loved his church to die for the church, then we must respect the same church that he loved and gave himself for to ensure not only that we support it, but that we are gathered like this for services. In the name of Jesus Christ. Is that somebody under the anointing? Okay. Amen. Are you ready for tonight? I, I came here with a prophetic word. What I'm about to teach tonight, I believe is a prophetic message to the body of Christ. And I trust God that by the end of this sermon fire from above will fall upon your lives and will be locked up in your bones i didn't hear your amen. amen this message is more or less a revival message somebody will contact an anointing this evening amen. that when you live here even you you will know something has changed about your life i didn't hear your amen You see, when the word of God comes forth, it's not just the letters that you listen to. There is a spirit component in that word. Your ears listen to the letters, but your heart receives the spirit that is in the word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, and the, and the spirit set me on my feet. And the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke the word to me. There's going to be an impartation of grace tonight. Ministries will be activated tonight. Destinies will be born tonight. Do you believe that at all? Show me by your amen. Strange things are already going on, I'm telling you. I can see the Spirit of God moving across this place. There are activations diverse anointings being released tonight your sacrifice of coming here today will not be wasted can we get into the word the bible says in judges chapter 5 you know after after deborah and barak had defeated sisera the captain of the army of canaan they began to make a rendition a prophetic song was written by Deborah and at the end of that chapter she mentioned something very striking that I believe is the destiny of everyone who calls on the name of Jesus in verse 31 of that Judges chapter 5 one remarkable statement she made like I said, it's, I believe it's the prophetic destiny of every true believer. She said, And let those who love the Lord be like the sun when it rises in his strength. Do you have that scripture for us in NLT, Judges 5.31? He said, Lord, may all your enemies die like Sisera, but may those who love you rise like the sun in all its power i thought somebody would say amen that's your destiny i'm reading to you he said may all those who love the lord don't you love the lord for we know that all things work together for good to them that love the lord and are the called according to his purpose whose you are and now he's speaking over your destiny he says that all of you who love the lord that your destiny the end of your life regardless of what you are going through now 
regardless of the fact that you may be broke regardless of the fact that you may look not like what god has said concerning you regardless of the fact that you may seem to be backward when others have gone ahead the bible says surely it says you will be like the sun when it rises in its power you know when at night time the sun disappears and darkness rules the sky and towards dawn around 4 a.m 5 a.m 6 a.m you begin to see little rays of light of the sun bursting forth from one end of the earth for a moment it looks like this is how the weather will be but as the time progresses way up till 12 noon when it is 12 noon everybody has to look for a shade because that's when the sun comes out in its strength and the bible is prophesying to us today it says that those of us who love the lord and all of you that came here tonight this is a proof that you love the lord it says that you shall be like the sun when it rises in its power that means the light of god in you will blaze through the darkness it will blaze through every difficulty it will blaze through every uncertainty he said you shall be like the sun when it rises in its power slowly but surely didn't he say in proverbs 4 verse 18 that the path of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more somebody say more and more day by day god is making you better forget about what happened yesterday forget about who you may have been or, or the thoughts that surrounds your mind about the things that you are yet to achieve forget about what people say about you or how people look at you forget about the fact that unbelievers seems to mock your passion for god the bible says at the end you'll be like the sun that rises in its power nothing escapes the heat of the sun i hope you know and nothing escapes the light of the sun That's the strongest source of light and heat in the solar system that we belong to. The strongest source of two kinds of energy, light and heat. Heat burns. Heat revives. Heat can also melt. Light shines. You know, in Matthew chapter 5, while jesus was teaching jesus gave talking about the believer now there were two metaphorical descriptions that jesus gave about the believer I'm, I'm, we are going to read the, the scriptures shortly but just listen matthew chapter 5 jesus in verse 13 began to talk about the life of the believer and he used two metaphors to describe how the life of a believer should outplay or how the life of a believer should be expressed number one he used salt he says you are the salt of the earth salt does two things salt preserves and salt adds taste or adds value jesus also used light he says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden in other words when you begin to live in the consciousness of your identity as light the Bible says you cannot be hidden. You cannot go to any place and you will hide. No. There's something about you without a signboard. Without any form of publicity. There's something about you that distinguishes you amongst many people. It says you are the light. You are the light. And just like i mentioned about the sun i told you that there are two kinds of energy that will come from this light this kind of light first of all light and then heat light and then heat as light you are meant to shine through the darkness you are meant to cause illumination you are meant to reveal you are meant to disclose your presence is meant to expose you are meant to reveal the true state of things you know that's why paul said that the church is the ground and the pillar of truth it is truth that reveals and as heat you are meant to burn with fervency 
there is a fire that every believer should walk with there is a level of fire a level of intensity heat that you are supposed to walk with a level of energy that you are supposed to radiate that is healthy for any believer one man that ex that exemplified this kind of expression is a man that the bible calls john the baptist a very strange man that i want to look at this evening and then we'll see a few things and then we'll pray john the baptist was born in a time of apostasy in a time where the people of god had backslided this was about 400 years after which God ever spoke to the children of Israel. Imagine a nation staying for 400 years without any word from God. It was a season of darkness. It was a season when evil was at its peak. It was a season where all kinds of compromise had infiltrated even the people of God. In a time of apostasy, in a time where the things of God was treated with laxity. In a time when the power of God had become gloomy. In a time where the last trace and evidence of God was almost wiped out. In a nation that once saw whom God was. A man was given birth to. And his name was called John. In fact, the, his name alone made him strange. Because in those days in Israel, when a man is born in the family... They will have to give him a name of somebody who was in the lineage. Maybe the name of his father or the name of his grandfather or the name of his great grandfather. They asked Zechariah, what shall his name be? And he wrote on the tablet, he said, John. And all the, all the people said, we have not seen anything strange like this. That there's no one with this name before. And that young boy grew up to, to be a model a life that even jesus had to give an appraisal of and that's the man that we want to study today because these are the seasons of revival do you believe what i'm telling you god is moving on the earth these seasons john chapter 5 in verse 35 here was jesus's own testimony of john remember that john was the one who bore witness to jesus he was the one who identified jesus as the lamb all the prophets in the old testament had one thing or the other to say as it has to do with their opinion of the prophecies that they released about jesus christ many prophets gave different prophecies about the coming of the messiah in fact none of them even identified him as jesus everyone gave his own perspective of prophecy but no one except john was able to identify that this one is the lamb of god that was slain to take away the sins of the world his name was called john and then jesus in his own time in ministry gave a mighty appraisal about john look at what jesus had to say about john here he said he was the burning and shining lamp he said and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light because of the light and because of the heat the energy that radiated from john's life you know john was a strange man go back to 35 that's all that's the only verse we're taking there you know john was a strange man in luke chapter 1 verse 80 and the truth is if you want to make a difference in your generation you have to be strange there has to be things about you that makes you different from others i'm not saying that you must be spooky and you know i'm not talking about that negative kind of strain but i'm just saying that you can't be a believer i want to live for god and be commonized with others no there's something about your life that makes the difference in your world in luke chapter 1 verse 80 the bible says that john was in the wilderness until his season of appearing he grew in the wilderness john was a son to priests zechariah and elizabeth he was supposed to live probably close to the temple as a priest or maybe live in the portion that was allocated to his own tribe but the bible says he was in the wilderness what kind of a man stays away from civilization what kind of a man isolates himself away from the co the, the contemporaries of his world what kind of a man stays away from the current trends of his society 
You know, sometimes when God wants to make a mighty man, he will isolate you from civilization. There are moments in your life where God will isolate you. He will take you away from the norm, from the things that are accustomed with your world. And for a while, it will make you think that you are strange. It will make you, you know, you will have that feeling of wanting to belong. But when God is true with you, He releases you and you become the talk of the town. The Bible says John was in the wilderness. Historically, I read one time, not captured in the scriptures, but historically, you know, Bible historians. One of the things they wrote about John, they had an account from his disciples. And according to that account, John's disciples, they said that they never slept and woke up with John the Baptist. They can all go to bed together, but when they wake up, they will see him coming from the desert. And that his eyes were always red. There was something about John that made him different. That was why he could challenge evil in his days. That was why he could preach, repent. And the Bible says, as harsh as his preaching was, the entire nation will go out to him in the wilderness. That's the kind of energy we need these days. Oh. That's the kind of energy that the church needs these days. When the Bible says that in the last days, the house, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above other mountains and all nations will flow. That is the kind of compelling power that the church will need to exhibit for the nations of the world to flow. Am I talking to you? The Bible says it was the burning and the shining lamp. And that's the title of my message tonight. A burning and a shining light. May that be your testimony after today. <laughs> a burning and a shining light. Last year, during the seven super Sundays, we did a teaching on the power of light. And I mentioned to you the different characteristics of light. Amongst them, I said, light reveals. I said that light attracts. That light exposes. Try and get that teaching. The power of light. Powerful, powerful insight for the life of a believer that we can learn from the metaphor of light. And the Bible says, John was a burning and a shining light to have been a burning light or to be a burning light it speaks of fervency in other words consistency it speaks of strength it speaks of effectiveness it speaks of impact to be a shining light it connotes brilliance beauty, distinction, excellence, something about you that attracts. These are some of the qualities that you can experience if you must be a burning. Or these are the things that you can see in the life that is a burning and a shining light. Let's start with a burning light. Luke chapter 12 verse 15 Luke chapter 12 verse 15 and he said to them take heed sorry verse 35 35 35 it says let your waist this is Jesus giving a charge to his disciples he said let your waist be girded and your lamps be burning in other words stay in a state of readiness of course if you read around this the verses around this verse you discover that jesus was talking about things that probably will happen at the last days and one of the wisdom that jesus gave to us for living in those times which we are in now 
He says that your waist must be gidded. The word gidded there means, you know, in Jewish culture, they always tie a belt around their garments to hold the outer and the inner garment together. When your belt is tied, it means that you are in a state of readiness. It means that you are in a state of activity. And he says, let your lamps be burning. Be fervent. Be on fire. Make impact. There must be something about your life constantly that engages the environment around you. It's a charge from Jesus. Let's look at the aspect of a burning light. And then after that, we'll look at a shining light. And then we'll pray. We are going to pray this evening. Something will fall from heaven on your life. I didn't hear your amen. amen. <laughs> so a burning light speaks of a constantly revived believer. A constantly revived. <laughs> revived means to be alive. It means to be active. It means to be full of life. And remember Jesus said, I came that they may have life. So revival for God was not meant to be an occasional activity in the existence of a church. As far as God is concerned, we are not supposed to have revival program. The church should naturally be revived. Can I show you a scripture? Romans chapter 14 verse 9. Maybe verse 9 or verse 10. Let's see. I hope I got it correctly. You are supposed to be on fire all day. There is an amount of energy that must radiate from the church. There is a state of readiness with which the church must be seen. He said, for to this end. No, King James. I think King James has it better. For to this end, Christ both died and rose. And what? Are you with me? What's on your screen? And what? The revive there is in past tense. Is that true? <laughs> Christ both died and rose and revived. So, revival is not supposed to be a program that we should have in the church. Where well, we have it once and again, church programs, just to be able to bring the people of God to that state of fervency, of spiritual enrichment, of spiritual fervor. But actually, when Jesus died on the cross and rose again, one of the things that he infused into the church was the spiritual capacity to stay revived. So there are some believers, maybe in a church they can experience highs and lows as a church, but there are some believers that have found a way to that dimension of life. And you see them stay revived all day, all night. Every time you come around them, there is a, there's an amount of energy that, prop, that, 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 that is combusted from them. It's like coming around them brings a lot of encouragement around you. Do you know those kind of people before? If you have those kind of people, make sure they are always around you. That's the only way by which you are not going to be cold. You know, Jesus told one of the churches in Revelation, He said, if you are hot, if you are, if you are neither hot or cold, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Hot means you must be on fire for God. Cold means you have decided to join the camp of the enemy. You have embraced sin and immorality and iniquity. But Jesus, the Bible says, to this end, he died and rose and revived. So a believer that is a burning light, it speaks of a believer that is constantly revived, constantly on fire. When a believer is constantly revived and constantly on fire for the Lord, these are some of the things you will see active in his life. For instance, number one, you'll find a healthy prayer life. That passion for prayer. Until you get to a point where when prayer is mentioned, there is joy inside of you. Your prayer life is not yet healthy. Are you hearing me? So you must pray and press to a point where there is an inner drive in you to always pray. You find a healthy prayer life. And that's one of the things you saw in the life of John the Baptist and even in the life of Jesus. Jesus was a man of prayer. 
In fact, all through the book of Luke, the book of Luke took time to show us the prayer ministry of Jesus. How that prayer surrounded everything about the Christ from his birth till his death. The Bible says one time in Luke chapter 6, sorry, in Luke chapter 1, the Bible says Zechariah was in the temple while prayers were being offered by the people outside and an angel Gabriel appeared and that was what led to the birth of John the Baptist. The Bible says in Luke chapter 3, in verse 21 and 22, when Jesus came out of the water, the spirit, while he was praying, when you read other Gospels, it just, it just said, while he came out of the water, the Spirit of God descended on him as a dove. But in Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, 21, 22, the Bible says, when he came out of the water, while he was praying, the Spirit of God descended from heaven. So it took a force of prayer to break into that dimension of the Holy Spirit. And that was what commissioned Jesus for ministry. That means if he was not praying, then nothing would have happened. In fact, in Luke chapter 4, the Bible says he was driven to the wilderness by the Spirit. And what he was doing there was praying and fasting. In chapter 5, the Bible says Jesus always withdrew himself in verse 16. He often will withdraw himself from the crowd to pray. In chapter 6 of Luke, verse 12, the Bible says Jesus was praying before and he tarried before God all night. All night is 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 12 hours in that desert heat. Dr. K, you've been there before. So you know the kind of heat that is there. You know we have all kinds of excuses this day why people don't pray. And I, I, I often tell some of our young people, I say, if you can't pray now that you are under pressure, if you can't pray now that things are tough, you will not be able to pray any better when things are good. It is now that there is heat in that your one room, no window. And the mattress is sleep and die. You know that kind of mattress? That's the best time to build. That's, that's that time of your life. That's the best time to build a prayer life. It's not, don't think when, when things become good and soft. Don't, don't, don't you ever assume that. No. There will be enough reasons for why you shouldn't pray again. I remember when I moved to my first house in Dambwa Road here. All that was in the house, we, we had to go and buy mats. You know mats. There was no money for mattress. We had to buy mats. Mat. Put it on the ground. Somebody borrowed me a uh, bed sheet. Not blanket, bed sheet. I spread it there. That was the sleeping mattress. So you can't sleep on you can't sleep and have pleasure on that kind of mattress. If that is mattress. So I will sleep like that and wake up by 2 a.m. in the night and begin to pray in tongues from that time till 10 a.m 12 noon like that and that was my life for all almost one year that i was there and those were the times when i broke into streams of revelation things that the holy ghost would teach me times when god would step into that room there were times i would feel the presence of god so strong that i almost would levitate in that place so everything happening now was the investment of that time so if now there's AC and there's a big mattress, <laughs> you have to buy rug eh? and put it somewhere. So when you are finished sleeping for a while, you have to because there is a level of fire that your life must emit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Demons don't respect English. Yo. What they respect is fire and power. There's a dimension of the presence of God you must carry around you. And one of the things that secures it is prayer. A healthy prayer life. When a believer is a burning light, it also means a healthy word study life. Passion to study the word. Passion to read the scriptures. Well, we need that passion in these days of WhatsApp and social media. These are the days when people, when they wake up, before they say, good morning, Jesus, this is their phone first. In fact, people have found a way of doing devotion and still chatting on their phone again. Is that true? If you are not answering me, then you are among them. Is that not true? They, there's a way they can split their mind into two. While they are, good morning, Jesus. They are replying this, replying this one. For you to survive as a believer in these last days, you must be old and rugged. 
there must be an atmosphere of prayer and the studies of the word of god some of you don't know that there is a spiritual force field that in the, you know you know continuous studies of the word of god does to you the more knowledge of the word of god you have there is a spiritual force field around your life what did he say in first john chapter 2 he said i write to you young men for you are strong for the word of god abides in you and you have overcome the evil one a time will come in your life where there is so much revelation of the word of God in your life. When demons appear in your dream, you don't need to shout Jesus. The word of God in you will answer them. You've not gotten there. How else? For some of you, you experience it. That you are in a tight situation in a dream. And somebody, God will use somebody's face to walk towards you and give you wisdom or direction. Or you are, you are, there is demonic attack and somebody will walk... When you see God use people like that, it's showing you that there's a level of activity, spiritual activity, a level of fervency that those people have risen to. You can't survive in these last days if you're not a burning light. A lot of things will happen when a man does not burn for God. When you don't desire because, you know, we want to there's a temptation to acclimatize with the world. There's a temptation to acclimatize, acclimatize with what is happening around. You don't want to be strange. You don't want to look spooky. Let's just live in a way that we are at, at home with everybody. You are praying in your house. You are afraid of shouting. You say, hey, Mele, no hear me. Ah. Well, I, I don't, I'm not an advocate of noise pollution. Are you hearing me? Because there are some people who do all that shouting and there's nothing there. But, 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 there's a level of intensity. If your life must give birth to the purposes of God in your time, there's a level of intensity that with which you must born. A burning light connotes a life of fasting. Healthy fasted life. Always wanting to subdue the flesh so that your spirit can ascend. There are dimensions in the spirit that you can't see when there is food in your stomach. I wish there was another way. I would have been the first to show you. But this is the only way. Are you hearing me? I wish if there was another way, I would be the first to follow that way. There are dimensions in God you can't touch. There are heights of revelations you can't touch. I remember one time I was in a season of fasting. We went for a video. I don't know if it was it this church or somewhere. Went for an all night service. Powerful service. I finished and I came back tired and wanting to rest. But I noticed there was an atmosphere of the presence of God still around me. As soon as I walked into my room, pulled my clothes and laid on the bed, all of a sudden i felt the heavy weight of the glory of god in that room i couldn't move only my eyes could move and then instantly the door did not open physically but i heard the sound of the door open i heard footsteps and i heard the sound of the door and a beam of light walked into the room and he began to tell me things about the last days tell me things about rapture about the great tribulation the only thing that i could hear with my ear was he said you will not be around when these things will take place and he walked out of my room. Till today, I can't forget that, that, that encounter. I hope you, will, you know what that means. Uh -huh. That means that tribulation when it comes, I will, he already told you, he said, you will not be there. So if you don't see me, knows that rapture has happened. Uh, you have something to say about yourself too you know there's a point in this walk in this walk with god where it is personal you have to pave your own path by the help of the holy spirit that's why it's called a path a path is a road that only one person can walk on part time it's a path you will have to press into god god will not just freely release it on you simply because no you don't throw precious things like that no a sign that something is precious and of value is the security system around it. 
So those who are ready to break into the storehouses of heaven, ready to break into the depths of God and touch revelations not seen before, taste of the power of the age to come, there is a level of fasting that your life will have to be committed to. You will fast to a point where you will not even find pleasure with natural things. One of the most difficult questions I can answer now in my life, with all due respect, is what are you going to eat? Ask the welfare department they know. Because I, I can't stay and be thinking of what I will eat tomorrow. No. You know, there's, there's something they call anywhere belly face. And when I wake up that tomorrow, let's wait for tomorrow. After all, Jesus said, tomorrow we'll take care of. Aha. Let's wait for that. When did tomorrow come? I will tell you what I want to eat. And don't tell me that it's not available because my God shall supply. So my mind is not about those things. He said, take no thought about what you will eat or drink or what you will put on. He says, life no more than raiment or food. He said, for your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. He said, but these are the things that the Gentiles seek. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all shall be added. But people are now following the addition. And they've forgotten seeking. I'll tell you the truth. There's a level of power you can't walk in if there's no healthy routine of fasting and prayer around your life. That's what it means to be a burning light. Even Jesus said it about John the Baptist. He said when John the Baptist came fasting and praying, you people said he was a demon. He said now the son of man has come and he's eating and drinking. He said he's a gluten and a one biber. In fact, one of the problems that Jesus' disciples had was they were not always fasting. One time the Pharisees came to Jesus. The disciples of the Pharisees, they say, the disciples of John fast. We too we fast, but your disciples don't fast. Every time, you know, because Jesus was always with them. Anytime there was an emergency, all they needed to do was call on Jesus. Maybe that was why Jesus even slept, you know, you know, in the boat. Deliberately, maybe Jesus slept. Say, these guys, every day, wake up and do something for yourself. Yet yeah, they still call them. They say, Do you not care that we'll perish? They use emotional blackmail. They say, Do you not care that we'll perish? You'll die now. <laughs> and then a day came when there was a demon. You know, Jesus also gave them power. That means that when your life has accumulated so much power and grace in God, there's a level you can get to by delegating another person. You can release some of those, some of that power that you have. And the person will walk in a measure of the supernatural. Not based on that individual, but based on what they have through you. So they went out for evangelism and they casted out demons. They came back. They said, even the demons were subject to us. But a day came when they could not cast demons from a boy. And Jesus says, how long will I bear with you? Because of your unbelief. He said, this kind goeth not out except by prayer. There are spirits you can't contend with if you are always eating every day, swallowing food. I, I'm not saying food is not good, it's good. <laughs> but if you keep swallowing like that, the priest of this world, the Bible says for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, when, when, when you give yourself to too much comfort and food, you, there is the, the flesh gains dominion over you. So the priest of the world has some form of control over you because that's his realm. But that this night, this night, somebody will contact a fire. No, I mean it all. That a young lady here tonight, you will return back. And if there's something called a grace for fasting, a grace for traveling in prayer, you will find out after one month that you have skipped breakfast. There's a level of burning that you can carry that things like depression discouragement cannot get you it's true don't say it's not true what you are seeing is just your experience i'm telling you there are men that live like gods on the earth there are men that live like spirits there are men that can tell you come back by 4 p.m it is 10 a.m now come back by 4 p.m and i'll have the money to give you and by 4 p.m. when you come back, they have times two of the money. 
and they did not text anybody there are men like that there are men that understand the routes to the storehouses of heaven write this down when you are a burning light when you are a burning light these are the things that you will do or these are the things that your life will express or experience in other words duties of a burning light number one a burning light purifies so when you are a burning light your presence purifies your presence is what jesus can use to bring about sanitation purification from sin and iniquity that the reason why god has not destroyed the world yet is because of the presence of believers our presence emits the holiness and the righteousness of god and because of that we purify everywhere we go to purify means to refine it means to cleanse malachi chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4 let's look at what the word of god says he said behold i send my messenger and he will prepare the way before me now this messenger here was talking about john the baptist my messenger m in small letters and the lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple even the messenger capital letter this one now is jesus even the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight behold he is coming says the lord of hosts so john the baptist was a system that came to prepare the way to purify the hearts of the people and make them ready for the coming of jesus he said but who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like laundra soap he said for he will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver and he will purify the sons of levi a fire that can purify metals like silver and gold is truly a blazing furnace he said and he will purify even the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer to the lord an offering in righteousness verse 4 please then the offering of judah and jerusalem will be pleasant to the lord as in the days of old as in former years so you become your presence becomes a purifying factor it is because of you that god can show mercy to that family remember what abraham told god he said if you find 50 people in the city of sodom will you spare them god said if there are 50 righteous people i will spare them because of the presence of righteousness Can I tell you what I'm seeing now? I'm seeing a vision right now. There's somebody here. You are called into ministry. There's a grace that will come on you now. And I see, I see an angel pouring something like oil on your eyes and on your, on your tongue. And I'm seeing that you will have a ministry like John the Baptist. In other words, your presence will bring purification from sin. God will use you to turn the hearts of men that have been glued to iniquity, that have been glued to unrighteousness. God will use your ministry to turn the hearts of men back to him. And that grace of John the Baptist is resting upon you. I'm just, I'm seeing a young man. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing that anointing rest upon you mightily from heaven. You will be a John the Baptist in your time. That's what the Spirit of God is telling me. You'll be a John the Baptist. Your messages will break the heart of people from sin. 
your messages will turn people onto repentance i'm stretching my hands whoever that person is let that grace rest upon you right now today you are activated to step into that grace step into that dimension of ministry man or woman boy or girl your presence will be a purifier let's continue a burning light purifies number two a burning light brings judgment against evil and wickedness there are neighborhoods there are streets communities under the influence and the captivity of darkness I'm seeing fire resting upon a young lady. It's like crown. That's what I'm seeing. It's like crown. It's like crown, but it is fire. I don't know what God is doing right now. But God is activating something mighty in your spirit. On a young lady. That's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing fire like crown. I'm just seeing that right now. Don't be distracted. You pay attention to me. Forget about what God is doing. You pay attention here. There are communities held under the captivity of darkness. I said, don't be distracted, please. Everybody don't look there. Just look at me, okay? There are places you go to. There are fa households, families, compounds. You enter and you don't need a, a, a native doctor to tell you that there is darkness in this place. There are villages you end to enter to because of the amount of darkness, witchcraft, spiritism and all kinds of evil in that place evil civilization has been halted from entering that place when you are a burning light god will have to use you within your generation within your dispensation as an instrument of judgment against evil and wickedness can i show you something two scriptures psalms 82 from verse 1 to 4 quickly psalms 82 from verse 1 to 4 quickly he said God stands in the congregation of the mighty he judges among the gods how long this is God speaking now he said how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked defend the poor and fatherless do justice to the afflicted and needy verse 4 he said deliver the poor and needy free them from the hand of the wicked that means without the presence of these ones categorized as the mighty categorized as gods you will find wickedness as the order of the day you will find evil holding sway you will find injustice you will find all forms of unrighteousness satan will prowl around Ecclesiastes chapter 8, another scripture, verse 12. A burning light is an instrument of judgment against evil and wickedness. Can you permit us today, let's, let's pray at least one prayer and do some judgmental work in your family, around your family. Is that okay for us to do today? All right. Is it verse 12? Check verse 11 for me. Look at this. It said, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. As a result, what happens? It said, therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So the reason why people are embracing mischief, iniquity, sin, evil, more and more you find the kingdom of darkness increasing. Now, Yahoo Yahoo is almost becoming a, a, a legitimate source of wealth. People see no reason why they shouldn't walk into evil. All kinds of fetish activities amongst young people. The Bible said the reason for that is because the sentence of an evil work is not executed speedily. 
It's not God that will execute that judgment. No. It is the sons of men that he has placed. The Bible says in Psalms 115 verse 16 that the heavens of heaven belong to God but the earth has he given to the sons of men. God has placed us as kings on the earth so that we can bring judgment against evil. That your presence in a family should not allow evil to multiply. That your presence in a family, how long the witchcraft seems to be descending from one generation to another. Because some people have refused to stand in their identity as, as a burning light. There's a, an intensity of heat with which you will, you will burn in that family that all the witches will repent. They will have to repent. Now we have the staff of witchcraft passed down from one generation to another. There are some people that are afraid of going to their villages. Evil multiplying around us. Even in church now, Satan has crept in because the lamps have refused to burn. He said, because the sentence against an evil work. I'm not just talking about church alone. Even in your place of work, some of you have, it's not everybody. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not trying to preach. Uh, I, I don't want you to go and suspect everybody. But let me tell you the truth. Huh? We are living in a wicked world. The Bible says in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. John chapter 1 John 5 9, 19. It says the whole world lieth in wickedness. It's not everybody you see in your office that is a human being or has a human heart. Some of them have drank blood to get that position. Some of them have eaten human flesh. Some of them bow down to all. You just you think everybody's normal because they look human. No. No. Some of them have sworn to all kinds of gods. And then you find an office where every two months somebody dies. Every two months somebody dies. And you say it's normal. God sent you there as an instrument of judgment. Some of you... You do business in a place where altars were raised before you got the shop. All kinds of... You know, it's believers... When we, when we neglect the place of priesthood, that's when we will, we will commonize everything around us. That's when you think success is only as a result of hard work and intellectualism. It's not true. There is a spiritual dimension to success. There are people who are not as intelligent as you, but they are the ones striving. God sent you there as an instrument of judgment, as a sharp two-edged sword. He said, let the high praises of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword on their hands to execute judgment against the kings. He said, to bind their kings with fetters and their princes with chains of iron. He said, this honors all the saints, all the saints. So at every point in your life, God will use you as an instrument of judgment. If you remain in a place for one year and witches are comfortable with your presence there, my advice is either you pack out of that place or you need to go on a retreat fast. Fast. Some of you have eaten poison. Somebody bought something for you in your place of work and gave you and you ate. And that's why in the last eight months there's a particular pain you always have on your, in your stomach. When we abandon priesthood as believers, we will commonize everything. You will sleep in the night and wake up in the morning when the sun is up and enter into an atmosphere where there are arrows flying by day. You don't know how to wake up at night and, 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 and create your own fashion of the day. I hope I'm, I, I hope I'm bringing provocation to somebody here. Even pastors now, some of them ministers, music ministers, word ministers, God is no longer enough or God is too slow. So they have gone into all kinds of diabolic activities to hasten what God had intended to do. Some of them would tie it on their waist and cover it with soot. Some would eat it and swallow. All kinds of things. Cults here and there. That's why you guys, before you go for ministration anywhere, you have to make sure you cook yourself with prayer. I know you have the voice. You can do all the, hey, I know it's good. 
<laughs> but before you do that, go and cook yourself. There are some altars you climb. As soon as you climb the altar, your destiny has been taken. Are you hearing me? It's not everybody that is building church in the name of God. Some people bury cows, bury all kinds of things. And that's why those of you that are going to be in ministry, you are going to preach the word. If you will travel, <laughs> there's a special kind of preparation you must do before you travel. A burning light is an instrument of judgment against evil and wickedness. Number three, a burning light is one who is alive in spirit. Alive in the spirit and active alive and active in the spirit in other words it's you you become a source of strength and encouragement to other believers when you are alive and active alive the bible says of the word of god it says for the word of god is quick the word quick there is the word alive is powerful a force of life that radiates from inside of you because you have the word of life in you. When you are a burning light, you are alive in the spirit and you are active. Active and zealous unto good works. A ready tool in the hands of God. A battle axe in the hands of God. At any time, God can deploy you on the floor of the anointing. Do you see what was written about Jesus? Acts 10, 38. He says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about it's not like Jesus wanted to do crusade. No. Jesus will go about doing good. The Bible says healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. He took the power of God about. Jesus will, you will not call Jesus to pray for somebody and say, give me two days. Let me go and jack my own spirit. You know all those uh, 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 mechanical, you go and... No, no. He was always alive and active. One time my spiritual father said something very funny. He said in this life as a believer, if you don't have power, if you don't have wisdom, if you don't have any of the attributes of the spirit, at least have red eyes. So that people who carry demons when they see you. Halamakaye boko sana. Merosko feluta branda kedabara. Mikora manska paragada. Your presence becomes the revival people are praying for. There's something coming out of your life that brings strength and encouragement around people. When the disciples were threatened not to preach Jesus again, the Bible says they returned to their company. That's why you are a burning light, alive in the spirit and active. You remember when we went to Bill years ago, I think 2017 or when? We went for a program. And on the last day, the power of God hit that place so strong. All kinds of manifestations. The Spirit of God broke out. Some people were under the power. In fact, there was a lady that was under the power for 24 hours. From that Sunday night till Monday night. We went to the house. You remember? They wanted to come and arrest me. When they, <laughs> they took true story, I'm telling you. Oh, and by the way, we are going to build this year again. True story. The power of God hit that girl so strong. They had to carry her to her house. When she got to her house, the mother said, what is this? She was prophesying and speaking in tongues and shouting. The mother said she will call police and arrest that pastor. Who is that pastor? So when I heard police, ah. <laughs> Amen. You, you were there? Were you, were, you, were you? Yes. Sharon, I think that's her name. I remember very clearly. When we went to the house the next day, Monday evening, she was still vibrating on the dining table. I said, what? I came back. I said, God, may I never operate less than this. You know, when you come back from those kind of preaching engagement, you come and celebrate. I came back into another retreat. Marocos Kapatakaya. They said, you, you have to be a reservoir of power in this last days. Oh. It's not every day that pastor's number will be on. There are days where pastor's phone will be off. What will you do in those days? Some of you are young men now. Being on fire for God is, is like falling on hand. Don't worry. Get married and your wife is pregnant and about to deliver. 
and they tell you there are complications I watched one, one funny skit one time. <laughs> the guy all his own is prophet prophet unfortunately his prophet was was a food kind of prophet when he called the prophet the prophet said I'm on the mountain meanwhile there was a mountain of pounded yam in his front his wife was pregnant and you know couldn't deliver the normal way and the doctor said let's operate her give your consent he said no my prophet said and the prophet was eating pounded yam and the prophet said by this oil with which i profess your wife will give birth in fact he had to go and collect the oil that the prophet had blessed and gave the woman to a woman that was in pain dying she drank the whole bottle of oil eventually she died with the baby so if you are the type that is always prophet, apostle uh, but fire will rest upon somebody tonight pray in the spirit for two minutes Lord I cannot afford to be cold in these last days I cannot afford not to be on fire that grace that makes a man fervent that make grace that makes a man on fire all day i want to walk with a dimension of grace with an energy of the spirit that makes me alive and active that makes me a double-edged sword holy fire burn upon my altar from within me, Spirit, you take over. Holy fire, burn upon my altar. Holy fire, holy fire, holy fire, holy fire burn upon my altar. May I never be cold. May I never be lukewarm. May I be a burning and a shining night. Somebody must get angry tonight. There's a level of grace I must walk with. Born for your generation. Born in your dispensation. Born in your locality. Born in your territory. Born in your nation. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We are rounding up. You must decide not to have a Christian life that is only a, a caricature of what the Bible professes. He said, Awake ye that sleepeth and arise from the dead. Some of you this, this evening, whether you are, you are listening online or you are here right now under the sound of my voice, God is shaking you to a place of life and revival. There is a level of intensity you must bond with. I'm telling you. These last days are days that you cannot afford to play. You can't afford to toil with. Even if you are not called into ministry as a husband, you must be on fire. Oh. The Bible says, as arrows in the quiver of a man, so are the children of one's youth. An arrow is a weapon. You think the devil will just sit down and allow your children to grow and become a, that arrow shot against them? No. The plan will be from birth. What happened to Jesus and Moses? As soon as Satan could understand that a savior was to be born, attack started from birth. Some of you are here, it was by the mercy of God you survived certain attacks from your childhood to now. So that you can raise an altar. And when your children grow up, the first thing you introduce them to is the things of the spirit. Can I tell you something? Those of you that are parents, I learned this from someone. And I think it is very right. Once your child reach five years, at least they can, they, they, they can reason. Lead them to Christ. Don't assume that because they were born into a family of Christians, they are, they are saved. Now lie. Lead them to Christ. 
And as soon as they are led to Christ, make them filled with the Holy Ghost. If you pray and you know what, keep praying. It will work. If it doesn't work, bring them to pneumatic. But in the last days, let me tell you the truth. Satan is no joke in this. It's only believers that play. But today, today, the fire of God will rest upon your bones. Let's look at the shining light and then we'll pray. I said a burning light refers to a constantly revived believer. Now a shining light refers to a transformed believer. A transformed believer. A transformed believer. A transformed believer is one who has allowed God through the word and the spirit of God to bring about a change in his mentality about the kingdom and about life in general. The Bible says in Romans 12 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. That God begins to give you a reorientation through the word of God. Through the word of God you are exposed to the wisdom of the kingdom of God that you belong to. And you begin to find God's own system and way of doing things. And when you operate fully on that scope, that's when you will walk in true dominion. A transformed believer. The greatest miracle that can happen to a believer is that he or she is transformed. When you are a shining light, these are the things that men will see about your life. Number one, a shining light reveals. A shining light reveals. Ephesians 5 verse 8 to 11. A shining light reveals. To reveal means to bring to light, to expose, to disclose. It says, for you were once darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Verse 11. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Psalm 36 verse 9. It says, For with you is the fountain of life. And in your light, we see light. Jesus was the true light that lighted every man that came in this world. And he, the true light, has made us light. The Bible says you are the light of the world. The first thing you know about light is that it reveals. It discloses. It exposes the reality of things. That the true nature of God that is resident in your spirit begins to manifest. Because of the evidence of that light that is shining inside of you. A shining light reveals. That means that your presence in the life of people can reveal to them God's purpose for their lives. When people met Jesus, they discovered who they were. They discovered who they were created to be. When Simon met Jesus, he became Peter. He said, you are Simon, but you shall be called Peter. The word Peter is the word rock. He said, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell. Simon means a reed that is swayed by the wind. You know those grasses that when the wind is blowing, they can move here and there. Imagine that kind of a life. That means he was not consistent. Imagine that kind of life. That means he was not steadfast. But Jesus said, no longer will you be Simon. You shall be called Peter. A rock is stable. A rock is established. He said, I've said the Lord always before me. He said, the Lord is at my right hand. Therefore, I shall not be moved. Men will only discover their true identity when that shining light that is in you is revealed. 
For some of you, it is in your field of expertise. For some of you, as God sends you to society, it's not just about your intelligence, but your intelligence becomes a vehicle through which the excellency of God, the life of God is revealed. And God now uses you to beautify the profession that you are in. He uses you to give a good name. People may know that all doctors are fake or all doctors are evil. But when they find a doctor who is a shining light, your profession becomes attractive. That's why God sent you there. It's not just about the money. No. No. That's too small. A kingdom agenda. The shining light reveals that you walk into an organization and because of the wisdom of God at work in you, you detect the missing link. You detect the error that they have been following and profile an advice that, that, that catapults that organization, brings them out of bankruptcy into wealth and plenty. Brings them out of obscurity into fame. That's who you are. In fact, some of you that are students, your four, five years or six years that you are going to spend in that school, of course, you will get a degree. But what you don't know is that there's like a kingdom agenda on your life. God wants to use you to evangelize to your entire classmates before you graduate. There are destinies there within those four years that the light in you will light their lamp and they will begin to blaze and, be, and, and shine forth. That's the reason why we are, we are the light that reveals. It says that you have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But that you expose them. So through integrity, through righteousness, through justice, you expose all forms of corruption. They make you a manager in a place, and the moment you sit down in that place, you declare from today, no more corruption. And you stand your ground. A shining light reveals. Number two, a shining light represents the values of the kingdom. A shining light represents the values of the kingdom. A shining light represents the values of the kingdom. What did Paul tell first Timothy? First Timothy chapter 4 from verse 11. There's, let's see a few of the values, the value system, the character of the kingdom. He said, these things command and teach. Verse 12. He said, let no one despise your youth. But be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. He said, be thou an example. The value system of the kingdom, the character of the kingdom. That people may not have seen God, but that which is exhibited from your life brings God on the scene. Matthew 28 verse 19. He said, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. A disciple is a follower. When he says go and make disciples, it means colonize the system. Introduce the traits of the kingdom. Introduce another civilization. Another lifestyle by which they can live by. God is counting on us to infiltrate the earth. And to display the glory of of his goodness the glory of his grace to display his character in his fullness paul told timothy he said be thou an example number three a shining light i'm rushing because of time a shining light displays the excellence of the wisdom of god in christ a shining light is a display of the excellence of the wisdom of God. How many of you remember Daniel? <laughs> the Bible says that they could find no fault in him, in his work. Say because an excellent spirit was found. They could not describe why Daniel succeeded in everything he did, even when the odds were stuck against him. So that was why they called it an excellent spirit. So when God sends you as a student, He sends you as a lecturer, He sends you as a doctor, as an engineer, sends you into the humanitarian hub, 
sends you as a civil servant into civil service that the wisdom of God will be displayed through your life in its excellency the wisdom of God is the only solution to the problems in this life the Bible says that wisdom is so high and powerful that even the foolishness of God the Bible says is wiser than the wisdom of men when you operate with the wisdom of God you become a solution provider when people gather around a situation and they lament, you will gather around and what you are seeing is an opportunity. Every time you show up, there is always a solution coming out of your mouth. How many of you want to be that kind of light? See, when you become like that, eh, your relevance will be so spelled out that even if they want to use any form of sentiment to kick you out, because of the excellency of the wisdom of God displayed, they will reserve you. They can kick out all the other Christians and leave you there. I'm talking about a wisdom that breaks every form of bias and sentiment. They will not care about your background. They will not care about your tribe or where you come from. Or your religion. Why? There's something shining through you. You become too relevant to be, to be disregarded. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10. Look at what the scripture says. It said to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to principalities and powers in the heavenly places. That even the principalities and powers in the heavenlies will look at your life and it is a specimen that they cannot understand. That's what God wants you to be. A shining light. That in an entire territory, demons will meet and discuss. What is it about this guy that we can't bring him down? The excellency of the wisdom of God. That is the wisdom that dissolves every doubt. That is the wisdom that dissolves or answers every riddle. That is the wisdom that can see through darkness. Job said, when by your light I walked through the darkness. He said, when the counsel of God was upon my tabernacle. There are too many problems in this life. Oh, that all you need to do to earn a living is find one problem and solve. And when that wisdom is at display, think of it. That's the wisdom that created the whole earth. That's the wisdom that created the human body. The most complex cre creation on earth. I hope I'm right. There's no living thing that is as complex as the human body. Imagine when that wisdom is operating in you. It breaks off that timidity that you have been that you have lived your life with. It breaks off that shyness. Many of you grew up feeling that you don't know so much. So people had to do assignment for you. People had to help you do this, help you do that, help you write CV. But when that wisdom of God is awakened inside of you, you can settle down and write one letter and that's the most approved. That they use your report as a template. When Hushai gave, I was reading the Bible just while I was coming on the way here. When Absalom was to attack his father, Ahitophel gave a counsel. Everybody rejoiced and said, we'll follow this one. They called him Hushai. They said, Hushai, what, how do you say we should attack David? And he gave a very, a very cunning counsel. So much that they forgot about Ahitophel's counsel. Ahitophel felt so disregarded that he left that place and went and hung himself. That the intent, that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by principalities and powers. If not for that counsel, David would have been killed. Because the Bible says when Ahitophel gave counsel, it was like God speaking. He can eat grapes like this and give you advice. And it would be as if you heard God. If they had taken his counsel, David would have been killed. But a man called Hushai some of you will arise with the wisdom of Hushai. It is by that wisdom you will dumbfound your enemies. Part of that wisdom is displayed when the enemy brings all kinds of attack around you. And instead of you sitting down and crying, you begin to rejoice. You begin to dance around. And then make the devil look stupid as if he didn't do anything around you. It's like saying to Satan, bring your worst. The excellency of the wisdom of God. That's what you do as a shining light. Some of you, God has sent you to fields in society. 
where problems keep increasing every day and while you join other colleagues of yours complaining about the problems unknown to you there is a wisdom in your spirit that will create a research that will bring the final solution to it don't say you are an african don't say you are a nigerian it's only white people that will that will perform the research look at kidney a kidney disease killing many people in our environment in our territory is there a doctor that can sit down one day and declare that i have the wisdom of god in me i'm praying tongues until god reveals the strategy reveals the wisdom what is it about this strange disease that cannot be cured once a person goes down with kidney disease even the doctors will tell you it's either a transplant or they manage the person till death and the truth is they've done their best but can you go beyond the wisdom of men there's a teaching i'm going to do very soon understanding cosmos i'm going to do in that teaching i'm going to identify to you the three kinds of wisdom the wisdom of god the wisdom of this age and the wisdom of the princes of this age and how you can tap into the wisdom of God and live a life of glory. That's a teaser for another day. Just wait. I will not tell you when I will bring it. I will just bring it one day. You will see. That you can sit down in your field after all research has been done and they can't find the solution to this. And you sit down for three days like Esther. And when you come out, you come out with light. Who told you that as a Nigerian, they, your work cannot be published abroad? Who told you that, that people from other nations cannot learn from you? You see, the wisdom of God, when it is enveloped in a man, it, it defies every natural sentiment in that man. It is a wisdom that is superior and beyond. What is it that Dangote knows? That year after year, he, he remains the richest man in Africa. Is there, no, is there no other wisdom around business and entrepreneurship that somebody can crack and break through? At least in the Western world, we see that they've done that. For a while, Bill Gates was the richest man. And then in 2020, somebody showed up from nowhere. They called him Jeff Bezos. What are you manufacturing? Nothing. And yet, he became the richest man. As if that was not enough, another man, Elon Musk, break, broke out again and became the first, I think he became the first billionaire in hundreds. Now, that, those people, I don't know if they are saved or not. We are waiting for believers to arise. But you see, for that wisdom to come alive in you, you need to take your eyes off gain. You need to take your eyes off comfort and human profit. You need to take your eyes off pleasure. And look at yourself as a star that will arise. That God placed you in that field. Because he wants his glory to be revealed. Imagine when a Nigerian doctor cracks the problem of AIDS. And a drug that, is come, that, that can be available to both the rich and the poor. And it can eradicate the AIDS virus. It can walk into your blood and eradicate it. The excellency of the wisdom of God. You say my own is photography <laughs> there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty giveth him understanding there is something that you can know that you were not taught you can even go beyond being a photographer and manufacture your own lens your own lens manufacture it and then the market turns you see this is the only solution to africa let me tell you otherwise we'll keep living as third world generations or race there's a, a higher wisdom we must tap into what does first peter 2 verse 9 says but you are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation his own special people that you may proclaim the praises the word praises there is not the word praises as in praise and worship no the word praises there is the word virtue it can be translated as the word glory or as the word substance or excellency that's what it means or character that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light 
That's our destiny. That's our destiny. Look beyond your degree. Look beyond your certificate. Look beyond your expertise, your skill. And look into the wisdom of God that is in you. And begin to become a display. That's what we say in our I am confession. I am a display of his glorious riches. I'm an expression of his manifold wisdom. It's not that's why we say it every Sunday. Till it downs in your spirit and in your mind. That God planted you in this life to become not just a solution provider alone. But to become a reflection. A radiance of the wisdom of God. There's a young lady down that has broken a record of cooking for how many hours? I was happy at first. Because I thought she was one of us. When I saw some of her photos online, I said, mm -mm, this one is not one of us. They were amongst us, but they were not with us. Are you hearing me? Uh, because those photos cannot mentor a generation. It can't add value to young ladies. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And young ladies, let me advise you. Huh? If you think that by putting or expressing your body shape or physique online, if you think that that will add value to your life, that's the greatest deception. You have swallowed a, a tablet called lie as true. Because after 20, 30 years, those hips will not be there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's true. Even a foolish man now in these our days is looking for a wise woman. Ask Nabal in the scriptures. Ask Nabal. The Bible says his name was called Nabal. Nabal means fool, but he married a wise woman. <laughs> so we have to wait for another lady now who will come and break that record now. And, and, and through, that, through that announcement, you begin to display values of the kingdom. That your life as a young lady will, will, will mentor married and single ladies. That you show people that how that with Jesus you can win, you can overcome the world. Alt. Not displaying all kinds of nonsense online. I have no problem with that individual. But that one, there's nothing to learn there. I don't need to call the name. You know who I'm talking about. Abby? Uh -huh. I don't need to call the name. You just know what I'm talking about. Lay your right hand on your head. I prophesy over you that like a stream and like a flowing river, from today the wisdom of God will begin to burst forth from your life. I prophesy that your mind becomes fruitful. That the wisdom of God is activated in your understanding. You will go forth and become a solution provider. In the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I will pray. A shining light is one that manifests the greatness of God's power. One that manifests the greatness of God's power. When you are a shining light, you become a, de a demonstration of the power of God. Ah, somebody say power. Let me sing a song we used to sing those days. When we go to pray, don't worry, I'll show you the progression. Those days as we pressed into God, I didn't know I would preach. I didn't know I would do ministry. We're just hungry for God and wanted to see His grace at work in our lives. We're tired of an ordinary life. And this song broke forth from one of us. Can I sing that song? In my life, in my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power. In my life, in my life I want to see your grace I want to see your power In my life In my life I want to 
to see your grace. I want to see your power in my life. In my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power in my life. In my life, in my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power. In my life, in my life, I truly want to see your grace. I want to see your power. In my life. worry i'll begin to sing those songs these are songs of 10 years ago and plus we were very young then no admission so we decided to use our life to pursue god and so these were songs that will break forth from the spirit none of us wanted to live an ordinary life i had seen the fatality of an ordinary life and i knew that there was a higher purpose for my life for my destiny i knew that god was calling me as an instrument jeremiah 51 what did he say in verse 20 he said ye are my battle axe he didn't say you carry my battle axe you are the weapon god is looking for vessels god is not he's not weak he's powerful it's just the lack of vessels to demonstrate that power there are many people with Christian names and who call the name of Jesus, but there are very few vessels that carry that power. Ephesians 1 from verse 17 that he will fill you with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you will know the hope of his calling, the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He says that you will know what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints he didn't say the glory of his inheritance or the inheritance of the saints in him no no so don't think he's talking about your inheritance is god in god he's saying that god now has an inheritance in you in you that that's the reason why jesus died that's the reason why he saved you that you have become a reservoir of god's inheritance that when you walk around you are an embodiment of divine you are a vault a spiritual vault of graces of mantles now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power at work where in us what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us not toward unbelievers toward us that believe us the exceeding greatness the word greatness there is the word mega in greek it means really great you don't know how much power you carry the devil has made you live the life a life for a long time you think you are powerless you think you are the victim meanwhile god has designed you as the victor in fact the bible calls us more than conquerors not conquerors more than conquerors overcomers that's who you are an instrument of the power of god and i want you this night when you go home tell that sickness that is eating your body like job said he said though this king is destroyed yet in my flesh i will see god for i know that my redeemer lives and i know that he shall stand at last he created you as a shining light as a demonstrator of his power imagine if all of us walked in the power of god we will, there are, i'm telling you i believe that there are dimensions of the power of god that has not been seen are you hearing what i'm telling you at least we know that jesus walked on water 
we have not seen the one that walked on the air. The Bible says Elijah was carried by a wild wind into heaven. But we have not seen the one that will walk on the air. No, we've not seen that one yet. We've not seen the one that can walk into is it Hiroshima or Nagasaki? Where the atomic bomb is that place, is it still like that? I tell you the truth, the only solution will be believers that understand the excellency of the power and the glory of God that is in them that will walk into Hiroshima and life will grow again in that place. That a place that has been wiped off vegetation for many years, life will suddenly grow again. I believe that before Jesus comes, there are dimensions of the power of God that the world will see in the church, eh? That will make them wonder. And I believe that I'm looking at the people that God will use. How do I know? See you looking weak. See you looking frail. He said that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hence, we have this treasure in 18 vessels. That's why he chose you as weak as you are. That's why he chose you with your sick body. So that through your body, God will defy natural laws. He will break the hold of sickness. And you will become a healing stream and a healing balm. That's why he chose you. That's what makes you a shining light. When you become a demonstrator. Ah! In this life, I would rather walk in the power of God before preach. Before preaching. Are you hearing me? If preaching was a profession and you will retire, I can retire from it. But I will be an instrument of the power of God till I go to heaven. Look at the men in the Old Testament. They hadn't the life of Christ in them. They hadn't the Holy Spirit living in them. Limited in their own time and dispensation. Yet, a man will be so powerful that when he died and his bones, that was what was left. A dead body would touch the bones of a dead man. And the dead body will jet back to life. And yet there are Christians who speak in tongues. And that they are alive. And people are dying in their neighborhood. God forbid. Tell your neighbor God forbid. You see the thing about the power of God is. Before we pray. If you don't contend for it. You will not see it in your life. If you don't allow situations to provoke you. One time many years ago I prayed for my dog. I had a puppy that died. You know some infection swelling and all of that i prayed for it to resurrect it did not it did not rise i prayed for hours it did not rise well i cried and buried my puppy but i told myself that before i leave this life the dead will hear my voice and rise again it's in your bible john chapter 5 verse 29 it says and the dead shall hear the voice of the son of god and rise again you have not seen it before in your bible 28 rather that the puppy didn't wake up no problem but i said this life eh? no no are you ready to pray this night i told you the story years ago many years ago my father in law was having a retreat in his house in kefi and in the night while he was praying somebody came and tore his net and pointed a gun through the window to him and say bring your wallet bring your phone bring every money you have and every valuable thing there my spiritual father said no way he said my friend bring it i'll, I'll shoot you i'll kill you he said shoot do dead men die twice the person with the gun removed his hand and left. When you are holding a gun and somebody tells you that if somebody is not afraid of death, you should know you are not dealing with a human being. And recently, while he was coming back from Lafia, their car was attacked by gunmen. They came on the road and opened fire on his car. When they went back with police to pick the ammunitions, 40 ammunitions, live ammunitions fired at them. Not one glass cracked. What kind of life do you want to live? You want to sit in that illness and allow it to kill you? 
Or do you want to awaken to the destiny God has called you to? That God placed you in this city for such a time as this. As a demonstrator of the power of God. Some of you will grow to a point where you will literally walk into hospitals. You know that clinic in the school. You walk in there and empty the clinic. Everybody leave this place because they are healed. Years ago I went, myself and Pastor Dan, we went to TH. We went to pray for somebody. And he showed me one of his church members, a woman. The woman was just laughing and dancing everywhere. I thought she was fine. Then I saw her daughters crying. So when we spoke with them and we saw the report of the doctor on the woman, they said she had chronic kidney disease. So one of the classical was that she will be deranged. I said, no wonder they were crying. I held her and I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of death. And I said to you, leave and walked away. Two years later, right here after service, right here, a woman walked up to me and said, Apostle. I said, Good evening, man. She said, Ah, oh, you don't remember me? I said, Yes. He said, oh, You came to the hospital to pray for me. I was sick. Look at me, I'm fine now. I said, Jesus Christ. I remember my friend who was a doctor, he told me when he saw the case, he said, Apostle, there's no hope for this woman at this point. Two years later, she lived. What kind of life do you want to live? Will people keep crying around you? Will people keep lamenting in pain around you? Some of you come from families where witches have so decimated human beings there. And now you are their only hope. That's why they sold everything to bring you to school. But beyond just intellectual knowledge, there's another kind of knowledge that God sent you here to carry. There's another kind of power that God sent you here to carry. That's the real way by which you will become a deliverer to that family. When Joshua died, God raised judges. When the judges died, God raised Samuel. When Samuel died, God raised Saul. And after Saul, he raised a man called David. And that was the man that fought all the Lord's battle. Who will God raise in your generation? Isaiah was standing before God. God yet he was asking, Who will go for us and who will I send? Look at Isaiah in your front. Send him. God say, Who will go for us? When you see God saying that, when you are there, that means God is saying, I want you to yield yourself. I want to use you. Forget about what is around you. Some of you are beclouded by the limitations you are, you are facing. Some of you are beclouded by all the menace that the enemy has thrown at you. Can you awaken today to a life of power and grace? For this, you were born for such a time as this. You know what? After that attack, if I said if bullets could not kill him, then Jonathan would not die by bullets. Me, never. Never. And I meant it too. You heard the testimony of that lady. She was listening to a message. One of our messages when I said that I cannot be in an accident scene. And they escaped accident how many times? I'm saying it again. If an accident will happen, I'll disappear. And I'm not joking. I understand the dimensions of power. I know the route of power. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and they are saved. And the Bible says, blessed is he that cometh in the name. So the name is no longer an address that you run into. It becomes a signature that you can carry. Blessed is he that cometh in the name. You can walk in the consciousness of that name. And evil has no place around you. So physically you look weak. But inside of you is a reservoir of power. Not just power to heal the sick alone. But power to turn again the captivity of a family. Power to revive the economy of a nation. Power to bring revival to a people. And if you are such like that. Then this night, God is calling you to arise to your place of destiny. You have been called and created as a burning and a shining light. For you to shine effectively, you must keep burning fervently. Rise on your feet and let's pray. In my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power. In my life, I want to see your grace. Hey, 
I want to see your power in my life. I don't know about you. In my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power in my life. Hey, Shabarakata. In my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power in my life. In my life. In my life. I want to see your grace. See your power in my life. Say, in my life, I want to see your grace. I want to see your power. Listen, we are going to pray. At a time when the children of Midian oppressed Israel. The Bible says they were oppressed to a point where they were impoverished. The Midianites will come and scatter their grains and they will have no harvest. The Bible says they cried to God. What did God do? The Bible says and an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon. He was threshing wheat in a wine press. Yet the angel said, God is with you. Thou mighty man of value. I don't know what you have called yourself before now. But God is calling you a mighty man of value. God is calling you a mighty woman of valor. God sees you as an Esther, as a Deborah, a warrior princess that he raises in this time. Stop looking for the solution. You may never see it. That's because the solution is the one I'm looking at. That's the reason why you have to go through the same pain that they went through. He said we do not have a high priest. That is not touched with our infirmities. The reason why you are going through poverty now. Is because there is a grace on your life. There is a mandate on your life. Forget about what the devil is doing to you now. There is a mandate on your life. That you will bring many out of poverty. Into prosperity. A burning. And a shining light. I don't know if I have provoked you enough. This night for you to roar in prayers. But when we begin to pray, I want you to place a demand on the grace of God for your life in this season. And decide that from henceforth, I will become a burning and a shining light to my generation. The Bible says in Judges 5.31, it says, May those who love the Lord be like the sun that rises in his strength. If I have believers in this hall or that are following online, I want you to lift your voice and begin to cry to heaven. I must become a burning and a shining light. Every grace that is needed, every dimension of the Spirit, every form of empowerment that is needed to rest upon my life, I must become a burning and a shining light. Come on, are you praying tonight? Are you praying at all? Arise, and the glory of the Lord is Glory of the Lord is risen. And the 
Lamentations 1 13. You are going to ask God for an unusual baptism of fire. I'm talking about the fire that never goes out. Let's do this and then we are done tonight. Lamentations 1 13. He said, From above, He has sent fire into my bones. Into my bones. Somebody say, Into my bones. I can't hear you. Say louder. I can't hear you. Shouting like Elijah. He has sent fire into my bones. Fire. A fire that never goes out. He said, and it overpowered them. A fire burning in you, but it overpowers the adversary. A fire burning in you, but it overpowers the enemy. A fire burning in you, but it overpowers the enemy. I want you to lift your voice for two minutes and ask for a strange baptism of fire. He said, You shall be baptized with the ah, Shabba, you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire and with fire and with fire and with fire. I feel an anointing here. Like Fire is coming on someone. Fire to make you a burning lamp. A burning and a shining lamp. Fire. 
My God, receive that fire. My fire. My no longer will you be ordinary. No longer will you remain lukewarm. Fire from above in your boats. Somebody make a demand. Somebody bless a demand. Set me on fire, O oh Lord. Oh, For you, for you, as a music minister, set my life in order. For you, You will never be the same. You will never be lukewarm. You will never be ordinary again. He makes you tonight a burning and a shining light. In Jesus. Just be still everywhere, please, if you can. I see the Lord. Before I speak over our lives, I see God doing something quick. There are young ladies here that the fire of God will rest on. And I'm seeing in the spirit an order of Deborah's. That's what I'm seeing. A rise of the order of Deborah's. A rise of the order of Deborah's. Father, clothe them with fire. Clothe the age. Shatokapa. Emparokoto sebariaka. Clothe them with that fire. Raise the borers amongst us. The borers in the education sector. The borers in the medical sector. The borers in society. The borers in the church. Mighty warriors in the spirit. Jesus. I 
I'm still seeing that fire resting upon people. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that fire. Take that fire. Become a burning and a shining lamp. Illuminate your world. Now lift your hands. Let me speak over your lives tonight. Please lift your hands everywhere. And I want you to scream Amen after every declaration. Because something is about to rest upon your life. I declare by the authority of the word of God tonight. And in the name of Jesus Christ. That from today you become a burning and a shining light. You become a burning and a shining light. You will burn and shine for the Lord. You will burn in your community. You will burn in your territory. You will burn in your office. You will burn in your business center. You will burn in your classroom. You will burn for His glory. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says that Samson, he caught 300 foxes and tied them tail to tail and he put fire on their tails and all of them went and burned down the entire grains of the Philistines. I want to pray for you. Let that judgmental fire of the Holy Ghost rest upon your life and from today I release you as an instrument of judgment against evil, against wickedness, against witchcraft. I declare that you are an instrument of fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Because of this fire that you have received, can I pray for your families? Anyone that is connected to you by blood, whether you are here or you are streaming online, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare in the next 14 days, by the ministry of fire, anyone that is a mercenary of darkness goes down forever in your family. Any mercenary of darkness goes down by fire forever. They go down forever. They go down forever. In the name of Jesus. From today, the light of God comes upon you, and I declare that your eyes will be open to see. No more spiritual blindness from today. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord God makes them all. I declare the grace that opens the eyes and the ears. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. May your spiritual senses be open now. In the name of Jesus Christ. From today you are commissioned by the Holy Ghost. As an instrument and a weapon of power. I pray for you today. By the God who called me. And by the God that I served. By the God who has replicated all these signs and wonders in my life. And I pray by the grace that is upon this spiritual lineage that I represent. That in the name of Jesus Christ. From today become an instrument of power. Become an instrument of power. You are commissioned as an instrument of power. Go and affect your world. Go and affect your generation. Go and affect your territory. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will never be the same. You will shine forth in your area of expertise. Those of you in sports, in entertainment, those of you in music, in arts, in entrepreneurship and business, in the military and paramilitary, 
you may even be listening from to me from another local government in the bush those of you in the paramilitary in the government cycles we send you forth as a shining light you will become the display of the wisdom and the greatness of our god a wisdom that will confound principalities and powers you will become the next big thing in your sphere of influence in the name of jesus christ and may you love the lord sincerely all the days of your life your prayer life is energized today your fasting and sport study life is energized today I pray that you will become a fervent believer that the grace of God will keep you fervent in the house of God no more backsliding no more drawing back you keep going from glory to glory in Jesus mighty name we pray